Hi, I'm Rachel and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is a Q&A. So um, about a couple of weeks ago, I asked over on my community page to ask me anything and I would, I'd get all the questions together and I'd answer them in a vlog. So today is the day. So um, I've got all my questions listed in my box. So uh, without further ado, let's get on with it. So the first question is, do I do any exercise? And the short answer to that is no. I don't make specific time per day or any time in a week to um, do any exercise, like go to the gym or go swimming or go jogging or anything like that. But the one thing I do do is a lot of walking. I average between 8,000 and 10,000 steps per day. Um, if I'm meeting a friend in town or I need to be somewhere, then I'll start off 10 minutes beforehand and I'll go like the long way round. Or even when like going to the group to get weighed, I'll try and go the longest way just to get a bit more exercise into my day. And I try to move my body as much as possible. I'm not one of these people who can like, who enjoy going to the gym or swimming or like even jogging. I've tried it in the past and it's just not for me. And I know that moving your body is the best thing possible. Um, I used to play netball and I absolutely love playing netball. And I did that um, for quite a while and then the world went a bit um, without, you know what I mean. And then when it got um, restarted again and um, they changed the date because of the venue and it doesn't align with the children's activities so I've ha not been able to go back to netball which I truly miss and um, but overall I move my body as much as possible so the next question is my favorite speed food my favorite free food and my favorite sin food so speed food has got to be rocket I absolutely love that stuff if you've watched any of my what I eat in a days or eat what I eat in a week you'll see that I eat a lot of rocket and then moving over to my favorite free food and that is it's hard to choose between potatoes and pasta but I think I've got to go towards pasta I absolutely love a pasta dish so pasta is my free food and my favorite sin food is chocolate um, especially cabras my favorite chocolate bar um, and dessert when not counting sins um, can only pick one so my favorite chocolate bar and um, if I'm not counting sins it's got to be a Cadbury's fruit and nut bar it's my all-time favorite the hubster always buys it me um, to like cheer me up it's like it's my favorite I love it and then my favorite dessert now I'm not a dessert kind of person. If you're having a three course meal, I'd mostly want a starter and a main course, but I know some people like, like a main course and then a dessert. What type of person are you? That is my question for you, for you lovely people. So um, if I was going the full hog and I was having a dessert, if there wasn't a cheese board, then I would I would automatically go for the cheese board. If that wasn't an option, then I'd have a creme brulee. I love a good creme brulee. What is my dream job? Um, I don't think it'll surprise many people, but that is to work at Disneyland Paris, to be in with the magic. I just love it. Just to see people's faces um, when they first walk through the doors to see the castle on Main Street, I just would love it as much as them seeing it for the first time. Um, to be part of that each day, I just know that I would I would love it. It'd make my heart sparkle. What's my ideal weight? So if you'd asked me this four weeks ago, I'd have said it was the weight I am now. However, I have thought about it. I've watched some vlogs back when I was at a lower weight and I did and I looked back on my weighing updates around about that time just to see where what the actual weight was and I think that's where I'm the most happiest and that is 12 stone. So I can dip my feet into the top end of the 11s and also I'll be at like the bottom end of the 12s at my top end of my target. So my target has been reset for 12 stone. So um, hopefully I get it very, very soon indeed. What was my um, original weight when I first started Slimming World? And that was 16 stone, 12 and a half pounds. Did I struggle with my weight in childhood? Um, no, 
I didn't. My weight only became an issue um, when I'd had my children. Throughout my childhood, I was very, very um, interested in sport. I did a lot of sport, especially netball. Netball was my sport. I did it for school, I did it for high school, college, county, and I did trials for England as well. I, um, netball was everything to me. I played it mostly every day um, and um, yeah, loved it. So my weight only became an issue when I had my first child, Max. Um, after having Max, Max, became, Max was six weeks early, he was an emergency C-section. Um, I was, after having him, I was about a size 16 and um, I didn't really concentrate on, or like on myself or anything like that. I don't think you do as a new mum. It was all about like making sure the baby was happy, it was healthy, it was safe um, and it's a lot to get your head around when you're a new mum and um, so all my focus was on was on Max, especially as I was a preemie as well and I was trying to nurse him myself so it was all grab and go kind of food like a quick sandwich here, um, a packet of crisps, a sausage roll, you name it, it was that kind of food so I bloomed into a size 18 very very easily and but my focus wasn't on about weight, I did it didn't bother me as such, I didn't have time to take notice um, and then I fell pregnant again with my daughter Grace. Grace came seven weeks early and then um, was just getting my head around um, Grace being born. Grace was born in April of 2011 and I was going to start Slimming World in the 2012 and um, Grace became critically ill and I spent 28 weeks basically in between two hospitals, between Doncaster and Sheffield and trying to live in a hospital, um, you're living on canteen food and at children's hospital, Sheffield's children's, there's just a Starbucks on the corner. So it was basically, um, I used to get her asleep, then quickly go to Starbucks, get something quick, a panini, and then get back to her bedside. Um, and that's what how I, I lived my life until I went, moved back to Doncaster and then um, my in-laws became my meals on wheels kind of thing. And when Grace became out of hospital and she came home, I had to get used to living living the life of a parent who had to take 24-7 care of a daughter. So changing a feeding tube, a pump. So basically what I'm saying, I didn't I didn't take any care of myself and I didn't want to, my focus was on her um, and also was Max as well. Um, and then when Grace became stable, um, I, I needed to to do something for myself. I needed to look after myself. Um, I went out in the August of 2017 of a bank holiday with some friends and there was a picture which my friend uploaded to Facebook and it was that picture which I was like, wow. And I just felt so sorry for myself that that was the moment, that was my light bulb moment, like I needed to do something. So uh, yeah, so overall, I didn't struggle in childhood, it was after having children. I still have the clothes um, from my, my larger days and um, no, I haven't. The vlog on my channel is called, before we, before we go forward, let's look back or something and it's me trying on my larger clothes and um, I cry in that video, like it really upsets me because I can remember how unhappy and how much I hated myself. I, I really didn't like myself. I couldn't tell you how unhappy I was being the larger version of myself. Um, I just I just needed to do something. And when I looked back on my clothes, it just it, 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 I didn't want to step into them and go, look how much I've lost kind of thing. I want to look in my wardrobe at the clothes which make me happy, they bring me joy. Um, and yeah, so I got rid of them um, I, because I don't need to remember those days um, and see how far I've come because I know personally how far I've come. Um, and it's not just in like my weight wise kind of thing. I know how much I've grown as a person, how much confident I've come, how much more happy I am and yeah so no I, I haven't got the clothes anymore and um, then I, I got I have been going to Slimming World for four months how do you keep motivated for a long term then the next question is I have been going to Slimming World for four months how do I keep motivated long term so the next question is I have been going to Slimming World for four months how do I keep motivated long term so 
for me, the key to it is variety. I like to have a varied diet. I like to mix meals up, especially my Sind products. Um, I like to swap and change them as much as possible to keep it fresh. Um, I think variety and mixing it all up keeps it more excited, so therefore you're more motivated to keep going. But then you are going to have days where it's hard. Um, you're gonna have days where you're battling against a, a a chocolate fix you're going to be battling against going into that bakery and saying no to that sausage roll kind of thing and um, it is a daily battle and sometimes when your mindset is positive and you're really really wanting it then it's easier than some days and um, but sometimes you just got to eat that chocolate and you've got to eat that sausage roll and then the next time you've just got to the next meal um, you've just got to make sure that it's a Slimming World friendly option. Does your family eat the same as you on Slimming World? Um, no. No, 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 and um, that would be absolutely amazing. But this is my normal kind of thing, what I'm going to talk to you about. So I have my daughter, Grace, who eats completely different to all of us. That's one meal which is different. Then sometimes Max um, doesn't want to eat what I'm going to eat, which they're also, Chris is going to eat as well. So that'll be another meal, and then I'll make a meal for me and Chris. So in, a, in total, I make a maximum of three meals a night. Um, if I am lucky, then I'll just make two a night. But like I said, that is my normal. Also, the food that me and Chris eat can sometimes differ. So for instance, if I'm having, um, say, a couscous salad with lots of vegetables in my couscous and, and then like lots of rocket on the side, then I'll probably plate Chris up with some protein like a chicken breast or something like that and he'll have more of it. But overall, it's a maximum of three meals an evening I make. But like I said, that's normal for me. I don't mind doing it, um, but yeah. If I could have a dinner party with any three celebs, alive or dead, who would it be? Um, and that would be the three Ds. It would be David Attenborough. I just think he's the most like interesting man ever. The stories he could tell you, the places he has been would be absolutely incredible. I think he's an absolute legend. And then we've got David Jason, which is just a comic genius. Um, I've loved him in so many different sketches like Only Fools and Horses, Open All Hours and also Touch of Frost, which is one of my favourite um, programmes. I used to love watching that. And um, I just would I just think he's absolutely incredible. I, it just seems a really nice, genuine human. So yeah, I'd, I'd love to personally like have a conversation with him. And then finally, it's the most finest specimen of a man, in my personal opinion, apart from my husband, obviously, obviously, and that is David Beckham. I have, I've en enjoyed looking at David Beckham for many, many years, so yeah. David Beckham. How do I keep myself on plan without eating everything you shouldn't but fancy chocolate? Um, I have to choose my hard, basically. I Weight loss is hard and also being overweight is hard and some days are harder than the other and um, it's, it's a battle each day. Um, when it comes to chocolate, I know what my downfall is. So for instance, I couldn't have a bag of Cadbury's buttons uh, because I demolish them in one sitting. Because they're not wrapped individually, then there is no evidence for me of to have eaten them. So my mind, after I've eaten them, I've not eaten them kind of thing. And there's no recollection of me eating them. So therefore I will then eat something else which I shouldn't eat because I've forgotten about that. So I eat chocolate which is individually wrapped um, because I know then if I want to overindulge in it, then I have evidence and then it makes me really think, oh my goodness me, you've had 10 of these, stop it now kind of thing. Um, and also as well, when I'm on it, then I can just enjoy it, I unwrap it, I enjoy like unwrapping it and having that and then eating it and then just putting the rubbish in the bin and that just finalises it for me. It's all a mind game when you're losing weight and that might sound really silly to some people but for me that's what works. It gives me my chocolate fix um, but keeps me motivated enough to keep going. I'm finding it really overwhelming starting Slimming World but I need to lose weight. How did I approach starting without feeling like it was too much to take on? So first of all, slow and steady wins the race. 
when I started Slimming World, I didn't do the big shop to slim. I didn't like gather all my cookbooks together to find out all these recipes which I'm going to make um, and all that jazz. I kept it nice and simple because I knew that that was the best way for me. It felt too much already. Like I'd already done the biggest thing and that was walking through the doors and stepping on the scales and seeing how much I weighed. So I needed to be gentle with myself and to be and gently get myself into this groove of healthiness because I'm coming I was coming from a place where I'd eaten, I'd overeaten, I had no portion control whatsoever, and I was eating things which weren't the best for me so nice and slow so the first thing i did was simple swaps changing sugar to sweetener high fat meat to lean cuts of meat um my full fat coke to pepsi max cherry um i'm never going to not have a fizzy pop I, i'm not that kind of person but i'm never going to have full fat coke i'm going to have a pepsi max cherry which is free and i made my meals which i absolutely love slimming world friendly so my sausage mash and vegetables. I made sure that this, the, the sausages were Slimming World friendly. My mash wasn't full of butter or um, milk. I just changed it to an egg to make it like that creaminess feeling. I did. I measured out my, my gravy cause, so I could still have my gravy smothered all over it, but I could, I could count how many sins it's going to be. I made sure that I had more veg on my plate than the actual mash itself. Those little things kept me like, I never felt like I was going without. So I could have my sausage, mash and veg, but I knew that most of my plate was vegetables. I had a little bit portion of mash and then I had my two sausages with my gravy. Um, I'm not a person who likes cooking. I'm never going to do it, but I do like I do like having variety in the kitchen. So um, cheeseburger pasta is one of my favorite recipes. Um, and that was something which I just fancy a cheeseburger one evening and I adapted a recipe to fit into a Slimming World version. And it's one of my absolute favorite things. And it just feels so comforting. You can have that with some garlic bread. And then I, my favorite speed food is Rocket. So I'll have that on the side. And then it makes the best leftovers also. So nice and slow just take it slow the first thing i did in my first week was those three simple changes um, and then i saw a four pound loss in my first week i didn't do i didn't do the big shop to slim i didn't get new products in i didn't look for a new recipe because like everyone in group had mentioned this recipe you know i'm not into that i knew what it was i knew where my my like triggers were my triggers is on an evening the kids go to bed something on telly and I want that hand to mouth action so therefore I knew some sins on a night time um, for my evening treat. I try and have only three meals so my breakfast, my lunch and my evening meal and my snacks which I take for work I'll have like a little treat for a coffee in the afternoon and then I wait for my evening meal after that and then I'll have my evening treats. Sometimes I like to use sins within my meals. I find that like they're more fulfilling. Um, and then whatever I've left, left over, then I'll have on an evening. But all I'll say is slow and steady wins the race. It made me start um, YouTubing my channel and documenting my weight loss. So I'd watched a lot of YouTube in the past, like your Zoella's, your Alfie Days, Jim Chapman. So I knew it was out there that people did this. Um, but I didn't know people documented their weight loss on here. That only came apparent when I officially started Slimming World in 2017. And um, I wanted a recipe basically, a quick and simple recipe. And I typed it in and loads of different people's recipes came up. And I was like, wow, people do this. And I clicked on their channel and they did a weighing update, how they're feeling. And I was like, I really like this. Like it was so relatable. I'm a person who writes down their feelings, so this was just another version of it. I didn't start documenting my journey until November 2017, where I'd lost already a stone and a half in my journey. I think it was, or a stone, I can't remember now. And um, so I'd always, I was on my way to my two stone award, which I wanted in December before we went to Disneyland Paris. So I was halfway through it. A week before I uploaded my YouTube video, um, I'd been practicing putting my video on landscape um, and, and I just sat and I just spoke. And I found out that just talking made me feel a lot better. So 
I thought to myself, this is it. So I sat my, my little camera, my iPhone 5 camera, uh, on my bedside table, which is just over there, and I pressed record and I, and I talked. And then when it was done, I pressed finished and I uploaded it to YouTube. There was no edits or anything like that. Um, I didn't know how to edit at that time. And that was it. And then after a while, people started to comment and they could um, relate to how I was feeling. And they were saying, oh, I can't wait to see how you get on on your weight loss journey, which then I decided, well, I'll do this weekly. And that's all I did. And then when I got more confident, I started doing other bits and bobs on my channels. And I've loved it. It's absolutely fantastic. But but my be all and end all of my channel will be my food diary. It will be me documenting my weight loss journey because it keeps me accountable um, and keeps me on plan. I absolutely love this little community on YouTube. Um, it, yeah, it's absolutely awesome. What are my three favourite budget meals for Slimming World. So my favourite um, for the family is cheeseburger pasta. That is something which you probably have the ingredients already in your kitchen. A bag of pasta, some mince, some um, squirty mustard, some ketchup, passata and tooth beef stocks and you basically put it all in one pan and then you add some cheese at the end to make that cheeseburger taste and it's absolutely lovely and it makes the best leftovers. My next one is my allotment pie, which is a bag of lentils, which are cheap and cheerful, an onion, a celery, and a carrot, and some vegetable stock, and, and some mash to go on top. It's a quick and simple recipe, and like I said, it makes great leftovers as well. And then my personal favorite is giant couscous. I absolutely love the stuff. A bag of giant couscous is 80p and you can get so many different lunches and, and, and evening meals out of it. You can add a lot of veg to it, you can change the flavouring with a stock cube. It's cheap and cheerful and also it's so fulfilling. What are your top tips for getting back on plan after falling off the wagon? So my three top tips are take it slow. Um, slow and steady wins the race. Um, just um, relax, go back to your first week on plan and hopefully something will click and you'll be able to restart your journey again. And just keep it as simple as each meal at a time. If, you, if, you, if your breakfast doesn't go to plan, um, then make sure your, your lunch is on plan and hopefully the routine of the Slimming World way of life becomes easier and easier. And then thirdly, is remembering your why. Why did you start Slimming World in the first place? So for me, it would be looking back at that photograph of myself and remembering why I wanted to lose weight. It could be as simple as a pair of jeans you wanted to get into. Um, just remember why you started and hopefully that's enough to keep me motivated enough to keep on plan. What am I currently reading? At the moment, I'm not reading anything. I have just finished the Jeremy... Clarkson the diddly squat farm I absolutely love that book I come back I come from a farming background so there's some things which are relatable in it and I find it absolutely hilarious some things um so I hope that was my last book I finished but currently nothing the next question is any more collabs with Miss 18 Dapper are you and Vicky close as you all seem a close-knit family so I don't think there's any up-and-coming collabs with Miss 18 Dapper. If you don't know who Miss 18 Dapper is, she's called Vicky. She has her own um, channel on YouTube, which is Miss 18 Dapper. And um, how I'm related to um, Vicky is, she is the fiance of my brother-in-law, Daniel, who has also got a channel, which is 18 Dapper. Um, so are we close? I wouldn't say we're like amazingly close. We get on or anything like that. Um, we don't like regularly text each other but we're very pleasant and friendly and everything like that um but yeah we're we're, we're sister-in-laws to be kind of thing um, and she's part of the 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 family we are um chris's side of the family are very very um close and close-knit family we do a lot with each other we're all about like making mamla making memories and basically that's our main thing um, we, that's what we personally think like making memories is the best thing possible what job does my husband do so he has his own company and he's a painter and decorator 
are you close to my parents as we don't see much of them compared to the in-laws so my parents are very close to yes um however they live like an hour and a half away and um they um are not they're camera shy, I should say. They don't do social media. They're very old school in that way. So you'll never see them on like any of my social platforms whatsoever, um, apart from like my Instagram, where I'll like say happy birthday kind of thing, but they'll never see that. It's just me acknowledging their um, birthdays kind of thing. Um, but yeah, they're, they're not into, they're very, very camera shy, I should say. But I am close to them. I am regularly in contact with my mom. So that was every question which I got answered. Hopefully I've, I've found them all from different platforms and I hope that's okay for you. So as always, sending huge positive thoughts. See you soon. Bye.